Hi guys, this is Tetsu and uh, today I have prepared a Phoenix tutorial and what we will be doing is a beer simulation. Uh, this is the end result that we are after. I'll divide this uh, tutorial in two parts and in the first part we will start off with uh, filling the glass with liquid. Once we have the desired detail and level uh, we will continue with the foam. We will take a look at how to create those nice bubbles. I'll also explain some of the parameters as we go along. And in the second part we will say, see how to render this using V-Ray. And we will also talk about uh, voxel modes and gizmos and how are these helping us. Finally I'll jump to Nuke to add the Phoenix stamp uh, that you can see on the glass. And we will also add some background and uh, do a few little tricks to make our render more shiny. And uh, basically that will be it. So let's get started. Ok, so I'll start with setting up the scene units, so I'll go here to the customize, unit setup and uh, here under the system units I'll make sure that one unit equals one centimeter and uh, I'll also use centimeters for the display units as well, so hit ok to close that. And why is this so important? Well, because the scene scale and the steps that we're taking on each frame of our simulation are connected. And to give you an idea of that connection, I'll go here to the layer manager and unhide these two layers. And uh, if we take a look, you can see I have a small glass and a big glass. And uh, the small one is uh, actually the, the original size of the glass, which is uh, 20 centimeters. And um, you can see here I've created a simulator around it. And uh, this simulator is uh, somewhere around uh, 25 centimeters high. And, um, in this case uh, I'll have high dynamics inside that simulator because it's too small and uh, with high dynamics you need to take more steps each frame and with more steps each frame you have to of course uh, longer simulation times and uh, you can use that approach but I find it too slow and that's why I made the glass bigger and uh, as a result my simulator is bigger as you can see and uh, the dynamics inside that simulator won't be so high and then I'll be able to take less steps on each frame and of course that will give me a boost in the simulation times. So to recap, with small simulators you have higher dynamics and you need to take more simulation steps and with big simulators you have less strong dynamics and uh, you can go with less simulation steps. And we can go ahead now and continue. So I'll delete the small glass with the small simulator. So I'll select this, press the delete button and I'll also delete these two guys. And I've already created the simulator, uh, but you can create one by going here to the create tab, uh, geometry, stand, uh, Phoenix FD and press the Phoenix simulator button. Uh, then I can uh, create the source, which is uh, here under the helpers again Phoenix FD and uh, press the Phoenix liquid source. I'll rotate this a bit and uh, you can see uh, I need to specify an emitter and uh, I'll go ahead now and create one. So I'll use a cylinder and change its size a bit enter it and move it up a little to the side and just rotate it and uh, I can select again the source and press the add button and uh, pick the cylinder you can see these uh, lines here uh, representing uh, the voxel size, so they're quite big right now. I'll select the simulator and uh, here under the cell size I can decrease their size and uh, this will give me a better resolution. So I'll make them smaller and uh, you can see now I have a uh, half a million of cells, so that will be a good starting point. And uh, I can now press the start button and uh, nothing happens of course because uh, we need to enable the liquids so go into the liquid stop press the enable button and again press the start button 
So you can see now that the liquid starts flowing, but uh, you can also see that the liquid is uh, being generated at, uh, on all of the faces of the emitter, and I also want it to be created here at uh, this bottom face. So I'll just add an edit poly modifier, press the stop here, and uh, select this bottom face, give it an ID of 1, I'll press Ctrl I to invert the selection and give all the others an ID of 2. And uh, I can now select the source and uh, here under Polygon ID I can say uh, emit only from Polygon ID 1. And I will also set the mode uh, to inject so that I'm injecting the liquid instead of brushing it into the simulator and press the start button again. Okay, you can see now that the liquid is uh, being uh, emitted only from this bottom face and I can uh, change the color of the liquid to something that looks uh, more like a beer. So make this something dark. And okay. I'll switch to wireframe to see the liquid better. And I can now press the start button again. And the liquid starts flowing. There are some drops, drops escaping. And uh, you can see this massive amount of liquid uh, escaping through the walls of the glass. So what most people do right now is uh, they go here to the dynamics and uh, start increasing the steps per frame. Uh, they say, let's say I'll set it to 6 and I'll rerun the scene. But uh, you'll see that uh, this is uh, not the reason for this behavior and uh, you can see this guys escaped here as well and let's see if the bottom ones will escape again and yes again they start flowing here so um, this is uh, actually not a solution and uh, I'll switch this back to uh, 2 and uh, there are two things that uh, might be causing this behavior and uh, the first thing that I'll check is the normals of the object so I'll select this uh, glass and uh, add an edit mesh modifier on top I'll select some polygon here and uh, check the show normals and you can see this normals are pointing, pointing the right direction and if I make this uh, a little shorter okay, I'll select one from the inner faces and again they're pointing the right direction so the normals are ok and I can now delete this and the next thing I'll do is I'll check the width of the walls of the glass because most likely they are too thin right now and uh, the general rule of thumb is that uh, the walls of the object that you're filling with liquid should have uh, walls that are at least two cells wide. So to measure the thickness, I'll just create a box. So I'll go into the create and create a box. And for the size, I'll use the size of one cell. So I'll select the simulator to check the size. And here under grid, you can see the cell size that we've set earlier. So it's 0.3, copy this and paste it here and right now this box uh, represents one cell of the simulator and let's color it red and I'll just switch this back to gray okay and uh, I can now uh, place it somewhere in the thinner parts of the wall so let's say it's here and I'll center it on the Y so let's zoom in and uh, I'll press uh, select the glass and press Alt X to switch it to uh, transparent 
and uh, you can see right now that uh, this wall is actually thinner than uh, one cell and as we said earlier we need it to be at least two cells uh, thick so this will be our desired uh, thickness and uh, to to make that I'll just select the, select the glass up on edit poly and I'll select the faces and I want to select them by angle and I'll turn on the ignore back facing so that I only select the outer ones and that's perfect and I'll just uh, scale the walls out a bit so I think 7 units will be enough let's see so if I zoom in here again so like this, like that. Okay, and zoom in, and you can see they're almost inside. So uh, I think that will be enough. Let's pull them to the side here and press the start to see. Select the simulator and press start. And again, the liquid starts flowing. So far so good and yes you can see now that the liquid is staying inside the glass so the this thickness is enough we won't need to increase it anymore and uh, now that we have this um, stable scene we can now start uh, tweaking the look of it so I'll press stop here and uh, the first thing we need to set up is the steps per frame because we want to have proper liquid behavior uh, before we go any further and right now if I scrub the timeline uh, you can see that uh, we don't have this uh, proper behavior because the glass gets filled in uh, just a few frames and uh, I'll definitely go here and increase the steps per frame to let's say 4 and rerun and uh, another thing that you might uh, want to do is uh, change the advection method to forward transfer and uh, what forward transfer will give you is the physically accurate behavior and um, you can use this to see how the whole thing should look like and uh, then switch back to classic and uh, replicate uh, this behavior uh, I'm not recommending uh, using it for the final scene uh, however because uh, with uh, forward transfer it's uh, hard to achieve a settled liquid and uh, once the glass is uh, filled to a certain level you'll start to notice that so I'll stick to the classic and uh, in just a few more frames we'll see how the whole thing looks now so I'll wait to, till the 60, 60th frame and I'll pause this and let's see Okay, this is much better. The glass is being filled uh, more evenly, uh, not just in few frames. Uh, but I don't like the shape of the liquid. Uh, it's too flat right now. You can see the uh, surface here. I want to have uh, some splashing when the liquid hits the, the bottom here. So to achieve that, I'll just change the conservation method from symmetric to smooth and uh, let's start again and uh, the symmetric is uh, the symmetric con uh, conservation is uh, perfect for uh, let's say uh, an open body ocean and uh, let's say you have a ship uh, passing through the through the ocean and uh, you want to have uh, a symmetric uh, foam patterns on the both sides of the ship so uh, it's the the perfect uh, conservation method for these cases but in my case here I want to have some irregularity and uh, that's why I switch to the smooth so if I take a look again you can see the liquid now hits the bottom and you can see now I have this uh, nice splashing here but again it's feeling uh, too fast so I'll increase the steps per frame 
a little bit more and uh, rerun again So I'll check this again and okay this is much better now uh, I think uh, however I can increase it to 8 to have a uh, even better uh, result and uh, so I'll set this test per frame to 8 and uh, I will also increase the uh, quality of the conservation just a little bit 40 and uh, I'll rerun this simulation and uh, get back to you when it's done okay and the sim is done and it completed in only six minutes for 250 frames and uh, this is what we have so far you can see uh, we have the splashing at the beginning and then the liquid uh, travels smoothly toward the top and uh, remember this is a low version of uh, the simulation we will increase the resolution later uh, but now that we have the correct steps per frame I can adjust the level of the liquid uh, using the source uh, and uh, I can stop the emission uh, at uh, let's say here uh, to leave some uh, room for the foam that we will be generating later and uh, another thing I'll also uh, animate the discharge in a more random way because right now it's linear and uh, it's quite boring and uh, yeah so uh, let's start so select the source and uh, press the auto key to start animating and at frame 0 I'll leave this to 50 as the default and at frame let's say 200 I will stop the emission and uh, if we take a look at the curve right now uh, you can see that it's uh, almost linear and uh, as I said I want to make it uh, more random so we'll go here uh, let's say at frame 15 and uh, decrease the discharge a bit and then let's say frame 33 I'll set this to 80 and frame 60 65 let's say I'll decrease this just a bit and at frame let's say 135 I'll increase this quite a bit and then at 200 uh, it will drop down so I'll turn off the out key and I'll go in here and uh, uh, make the, the curve set this too fast and uh, make it more, more smoother or smoother I should say so okay and set this to fast as well and okay so you can see now that uh, the discharge will be uh, having this uh, random uh, behavior and uh, before I hit the start button again I think it's time to increase the resolution so I'll select the simulator and here in the grid rollout uh, again decrease uh, the cell size so I will set it to let's say almost two and a half million cells and uh, okay so now I'll uh, press the start button and uh, see you later and I'm back and uh, the scene completed in 26 minutes uh, for 240 frames which is pretty good actually because if you have used the smaller simulator uh, that we've talked about at the beginning uh, we certainly would have increased the steps per frame quite too much and probably uh, here uh, in the dynamics uh, instead of 8 steps per frame we would, would have uh, increased this to 14 or even more 
uh, but now we have a very nice result and I actually did one more sim before uh, this final one and uh, I did it because the glass was filling too much and uh, to make it feel less I just uh, stopped the emission earlier by just moving uh, the last discharge key uh, but let me just uh, show you the result from the first sim so this is it and uh, again you can see uh, I have this uh, nice splashing here at the beginning and uh, then you can see the liquid rises uh, a bit too much so this was the discharge uh, ended at frame 200 and uh, I've just uh, made another scene where I've ended uh, the emission at uh, frame 189 and uh, you can see uh, it's uh, a bit lower now otherwise the scene is uh, completely the same So uh, to show you, I'll just select the simulator and here is the key that I've uh, moved. So you can see right now it's at frame 189 and it was uh, here at frame 200. So we now have this uh, nice detail in the liquid. Uh, we have the splashing at the beginning and uh, we have the desired level. So uh, we can go ahead now and uh, start adding the foam. To add the foam, I'll select the simulator and I'll go here to the foam tab and uh, click the enable checkbox. And straight away, I'll decrease the rate parameter and uh, the rate basically specifies the amount of particles that will be generated. And uh, right now I want to create fairly low amount of particles. So I'll set this to one. And I'll also go here to the uh, grid section and uh, I'll decrease the resolution just for the phone setup. So I'll press the decrease the resolution button once and uh, then twice. Okay, and uh, hit start. And you can see the first uh, phone particles created here. Uh, you can also keep track of the phone particle count uh, here in the content window and it's updating every frame and I'll pause here uh, because if you take a look at the content window here again you can see that uh, in one frame the phone count increases too quickly and uh, it also creates the particles uh, right from the beginning here and uh, I want to start creating uh, the foam when the liquid hits the bottom so I want to start the emission somewhere here so uh, I'll get back here to the foam top and uh, I'll increase the threshold and uh, the threshold basically uh, specifies where to create uh, the the bubbles and uh, by increasing this I basically limit the places where the foam will be created so let's say I'll set this to 50 and uh, start again okay so uh, I still have these uh, particles creating here but I'll just uh, wait to see uh, the behavior uh, when it hits the bottom if it's still going to create uh, too much particles and I think that's okay now but uh, I'll try to set this to 70 and see if uh, it will remove the particles at the beginning so rerun again and uh, I can see here that uh, again it creates uh, some particles so uh, instead of going now and uh, increasing the threshold uh, to some crazy levels I can just uh, simply animate the rate so I'll click the uh, auto key here and at frame 0 I'll set this to 0 and uh, let's say 
So at frame 10, just before it hits the bottom, I will still keep this to zero. And at frame 11, when it hits the bottom, I'll set this uh, to something uh, higher now because I've uh, made it, uh, I've increased the threshold. So I'll set this to 10 and open up the curve editor and uh, I'll set this to, to the keys to stepped. Okay, and press the start button again. And now I don't have these uh, particles that were creating here at the beginning. And now the liquid hits the bottom and you can see the foam starts creating. So I'll let this uh, simulate for a couple of frames and uh, I'll see you back. So I paused this and uh, I rendered a frame to check the size of the bubbles. And uh, this is the frame that I rendered. And uh, you can see I have uh, enormous bubbles like this one here. And also the, the base size of the particles is uh, a little too much. So I'll just close this and select the simulator and here under the foam, I'll just decrease their base size to let's say two millimeters, and uh, I'll go ahead here and uh, increase the resolution back. So I'll press the increase button twice, and uh, now I'll start this and let it seam through, and uh, see you then. And the seam completed, and we're almost there. We have this nice foam at the top, but uh, to make it reach the end of the glass, like in the video that I showed you in the beginning, uh, like here, uh, we will need more particles and uh, higher lifespan. So I'll definitely increase the uh, the rate and uh, the half-life. And uh, this is what we have so far. There are still things that we need to take care of. And uh, one of the first things that I did is I rendered another image to check the size of the bubbles. And uh, if I just close this and open up the rendered image, you can see I uh, still have uh, bubbles like this one that are getting uh, quite too big. And uh, I'll decrease their size. And uh, I can just slightly increase the size of these uh, base bubbles here. So let me just go here to the foam tab and start putting in the new values. So as I said, I want to uh, emit uh, more particles. So I'll increase the rate here. And uh, to increase it, I'll just open the curve editor and uh, select this key, uh, which is the key at frame 11 and just uh, set this to 50. Okay, close this. And uh, I'll also increase the lifespan because uh, you can see that uh, these uh, these bubbles, when they reach the top, almost all of them are dying, and uh, that's why the volume here stays uh, low. And uh, you can also see here at the top they start to shrink because the particles start to die, and uh, we want to keep them uh, there longer. So I'll just increase this uh, really high. And uh, let's get back to the size. So as I said, I'll just uh, increase the size of the base bubbles. And I'll do this by increasing the size here. So I'll just slightly increase this. And these uh, bubbles that stand out here, I'll just uh, decrease their size by uh, decreasing the variation up. And uh, the variation up basically specifies uh, how much bigger than the base size a bubble can get. So I'll just drop this down. And I also want to introduce uh, bubbles that will be smaller than the base ones. So this is what the variation down uh, will do. So I'll set this uh, to 10 uh, because I want to have particles that are uh, much smaller than the base ones. And uh, this is what the variation down does. And another thing the variation down will help me uh, with is uh, if I open up this video again, uh, you can see here at the end, the bubbles are rising uh, with relatively same speed and uh, they travel like uh, in a group. And uh, this is because uh, they have 
they all have the same size and uh, therefore they rise with the same speed and uh, the variation down uh, will introduce smaller particles which will be rising slower and uh, I'll have a smoother uh, rising at the end here okay and uh, the last parameter in the size section here is the distribution and uh, this distribution gives you the ratio between the base sized uh, bubbles and the big ones so by making this uh, value higher I'm basically telling um, Phoenix to create more base sized bubbles than uh, the big ones so at the end I'll have uh, less of those uh, big guys here and uh, I will increase the rise speed because I now introduced a lot of uh, small uh, bubbles and uh, they will rise uh, slower and uh, they might never reach the top here uh, before the end of the animation and uh, to make sure that they will I will just increase the rise speed so I'll set this to 55 and uh, another thing that I'll increase is the bubble to bubble interaction and uh, what bubble to bubble gives you is uh, when you have two bubbles that intersect with one another uh, they will stick and by increasing this you force them to stay together instead of breaking up over the time so I'll set this uh, a little higher and uh, I think we're almost done and uh, you can also export the velocity channel if you want to uh, motion blur those bubbles later and uh, we will leave the patterns uh, for now we won't need them as uh, they will be more appropriate for an um, ocean simulations so I can just go ahead here and press the start button and uh, see you back and this is the final sim and uh, I actually rerun this sim one more time because uh, I was not having uh, enough particles to make uh, the rising at the top uh, so I've uh, gone here to the rate and I increase it to 68 so I've jumped to the uh, curve editor and uh, made this from 50 to 68 and uh, that's the key at frame 11 when we start the emission and uh, I've also rendered another image to check the size of the bubbles so if I open up this image you can see now I have uh, bubbles like this at the top here that are bigger I have uh, very small ones and I have the medium ones which is the base uh, the base size uh, bubbles and uh, I have this nice variation now and uh, if I open up the comparison between the uh, final result and the uh, uh, simulation from the previous video uh, I'll play this back and uh, at the end you'll be able to see how the uh, rising is much smoother now and uh, this is uh, the rising uh, you can see uh, the particles are not traveling in a group anymore because we have um, uh, small ones that are uh, rising slower and uh, medium ones that are rising a little faster and the big ones that uh, are rising uh, very fast and uh, I think we're now ready to start rendering this but before that I just want to organize my scene very quickly so I'll just select the glass and uh, I'll rename this modifier that we used to make our wall sticker I'll just uh, rename this uh, simulation because that is what I used it for and I'll also give the emitter a proper name and I'll open up the uh, layer manager and select all the Phoenix stuff and uh, put in a new layer called Phoenix and I'll select these uh, two guys that we use to measure the thickness of the walls and I'll just delete them because we won't need them anymore and lastly I'll just color code these two guys to blue so that I recognize their uh, Phoenix objects and uh, see you in the rendering part